contribution to the Bike for Life charity. I think uh, uh, that, along with your BBDO uh, air purifying voting, I think uh, will go a long way towards helping a country uh, that is in need of various assistance in, in, in various uh, forms um, and also in, in various areas of the country. Um, coming here and seeing and, uh, and, and listening to how BBDO is spreading its wings, BBDO Lanka is spreading its wings beyond the shores of Sri Lanka. It's very similar to how uh, how uh, cricket from uh, its inception uh, up until 1995 and then from 1995 from beyond 95 and up to now, how we changed as, a, as an entity. It's very similar to what you are trying to do because up until 95, I think we produced some, some great programs in the world. We produced some of the, the most stylish, most elegant batsmen. We produced uh, wonderful teams. Uh, we've been very good. Um, but I think we, we lagged behind um, the, the rest of the world internationally in a few areas. Uh, one was self belief, uh, self confidence, uh, knowledge, technology, um, and also in the areas of, of strength and, and fitness, uh, not just uh, uh, physically, but also mentally. And I think there was a clear gap between the rest of the world and Sri Lanka up until 1995, so much so that we were entrenched in believing, maybe because of uh, our time as a colony, but to a certain extent that we were maybe second best. Uh, maybe that uh, the, the, the color of our skin, maybe uh, the, the, the facilities we had, the knowledge base that we had uh, was maybe not enough to really allow us to reach our full potential. And as Martin Luther King said, you know, the, the most dangerous thing is your consciousness. It's, it's what you believe you are. And if you think you are second best or not good enough, that actually contributes to your work, the way you live your life, and the way you interact. And it breeds in you a, a, a feeling and sense of inferiority that you not only assert in yourself, but also you pass on to your colleagues, your children, and everyone you meet. And in Sri Lanka, it took a very small shift. Number one was Dabla Watmore coming as coach in 1996. The interesting thing about that one is that he is Sri Lanka. He was born in Sri Lanka. He went to Royal College for a couple of years. His parents speak similarly better than I do. Um, and, but what we saw in Dad was an Australian who played for Australia a few times. A person who has um, expanded his knowledge base by experiencing uh, what other countries had to offer, the expertise, the skills, and facilities thereby he actually was able to contribute more fully as part, as originally Sri Lankan, but more from an outside perspective to the way we play that cricket. He brought with him Alex Conturi. Alex Conturi was a, a, a physiotherapist and the two of them said you know, a few things in motion. Number one, they made us strong, they made us fit, they insisted on fitness, they insisted on training. The insists on guys who are great. Not everyone did, of course, as you can see, Belgium and Arun, they had those, those times, but they made up for it by being leaders in other ways. When we suddenly realized that we were now training on a level playing field with the other countries, we then expanded that to acquiring better knowledge, better analysis skills. We actually started media analysis building up a, a bank of knowledge, which we can refer to time and time again, to get a competitive advantage. We became mentally, physically, we, be, we became tougher mentally. That enabled us to believe in ourselves a lot more, because some of the guys who were getting tired, so over 30 and 40, were now getting to the 70s, the 80s, and the 100s. Fast bowlers who were bowling 10 overs were now bowling 20. Spinners were bowling more overs. We had fielders who were now among the best in the world because we were strong, we were fit, we were agile, we were athletic. All of these suddenly changed the way we thought. 
Some of you are pushing ourselves. We, earlier we were in comfort zone, we were thinking, this is enough. This is all we can do. You know, this is the best that I can be. But now suddenly we are challenging ourselves because we understood at that time that a little change by the changes that Dav and Alex brought in helped us to achieve something that we thought we could never achieve. Now, they didn't teach us how to bat and bowl the new. Our guys could do it. They showed us what we can do to streamline that, to improve it, and actually go beyond the limits that we've set for ourselves. And I think that is one of the biggest things that we see everywhere in Sri Lanka, even in the administration today. If we have a candidate who's a Sri Lankan and a foreigner, especially as we always go for Australia now, that in the cricket, Australia, Australia, Australia. We always think that we do not sometimes think of the expertise they bring in. We don't think of the knowledge they bring in. We just assume that the Australian is going to be superior in the way that they in it. We have coaches who've gone and done their, their, their coaching um, uh, training in Australia, the national cricketers, international cricketers, they come back. But if he comes back, we still regard him as not being good enough. Why? Maybe. Why is he not? What can he actually tell us that is beyond or better than something that an Australian can offer us in coaching? Now, this mentality is very dangerous because what it does is it contributes to this vicious cycle of self doubt that we've had as sportsmen. You see it at, at very important stages. You to try to eradicate it bit by bit. But it is hard to eradicate something when it is entrenched in a national side. The time you have to, to take to eradicate it is when you're young, when you're in school, when you're in class, where actually habits, perceptions, ideas, and minds can be changed in the world. So here we are. One of the best cricket nations in the world, but still with a lot of work to do to becoming the best, not to becoming, but actually thinking that we are the best at what we do on an international stage. I think what we need to be trying to do now is very important for as an example for even us, because you are competing internationally from Sri Lanka. You're working in business in countries outside Sri Lanka. You are contributing globally to your international network being healthy, being more competitive, being better, and also winning awards. For us in Sri Lanka, we go about, from a critical perspective, every day trying to catch up, trying to play catch up. Things we have tried to change over the last few years is very simple. No one plays catch up. We train the way we know is best for us to improve. We embrace new experiences, we embrace knowledge that now we can obtain, which is the same knowledge base that everyone shares in the world. The technology we is the same that everyone else uses. The equipment we use is the same or even sometimes better than what everyone else uses. Unfortunately, the progress that the team has shown has not been mirrored in other parts of our cricket administration. And it is important in cricket that there is a tie-up between the administrative arm and the players. Because that is the only way that real progress takes place. That is the only way real achievement takes place. That is the only way that a refurbished, renovated structure can take root in our country and actually contribute to building chapters. Stephen Moore, in his autobiography, actually named it out of my comfort zone. Because for him, it is all about his own belief. His Himself, challenging himself. You find in any part of your job, what's really important to your company or your team is for you to do your job as well as you can do it. There's 
it's no use to keep on another person, it's no use to keep on your bully, your competitor, your boss. You do you, your job well, and that's going to contribute to your team doing well. In cricket, it is the same thing. It's, we call it a team sport. It's not, it's actually an individual team sport because when you're batting, two people out in the middle, when you're bowling, it's you. Of course, you need your fielders to help you. But it's, most of the time, you find yourself alone. And we always talk about before you go into bat, before you go into field, before you start a match, what do you think about? Are you thinking about your teammate and thinking, oh, is he ready? Will he do well? Uh, are you thinking about what you're feeling? Are you I'm scared? Am I nervous? Or are you really thinking about doing the job that you have to do at that moment? We found that the more successful teams and the more successful players actually think about what they're going to do out there. You walk across the boundary line and in your head, you're just thinking about this is what I have to do now. I have to go out there, look at the ball, play it. I'm not going to think about who's bowling at me. It really doesn't matter whether it's McGraw or Nuri or Bass. All it matters is there's a great ball coming at me and how I'm going to deal with the situation and the challenge that it presents. Success is always about yourself in a team. No matter how hard you try to change the team, you start by changing yourself. And that is the one thing I've realized over my years in cricket. It is all about you. The way you think, the way you prepare, the way you interpret experiences, the way you embrace knowledge and new thinking, that is what is going to enhance your team. It is not a secret. There are no miracles. It's about work. And I like when, when I was explaining your, your mantra, work, work, and the work. Yeah. It's, it's very true, and I am here today because I believe in hard work and doing the right work. I am not as talented as, I would say, 95% of the players who play in my team. I started cricket when I was seriously when I was about 16. I didn't come to Columbia to play cricket. I came to go to university. The universities were closed for two years. I used those two years to play cricket. That was the time we lost in 1999. Um, we lost in the 1999 World Cup. He didn't get me on the first round, and everyone was calling for change. I had managed to do well for two years in the clubs. I got caught up in that wave of change, and I was suddenly in the A side and suddenly in the national side. I spent my first year, first two tours in the national side. Uh, one was against Pakistan and South Africa, trying to do the one day series, and the next one was against South Africa in Sri Lanka in Test I was very happy, very excited. I was in the national side. I did a very good one day series. Started playing the test match. In the first three tests, my highest score was 23 against South Africa. Um, and I thought, that's it, probably my test career is not going to go anywhere. Maybe I should really think about playing one day. I went to South Africa for my next tour in South Africa. It was a tough challenge for a young kid because you have balls who move really quickly, the wickets are different. Uh, but I managed to have relatively good success in South Africa, both in, in the OPIs and in the test matches. I was doing okay for a while. But then suddenly I hit this patch, four to five to six months down into my career, where it was getting difficult for me to deal with the challenges that I faced every day. Because in cricket what happens is your first year is your easiest year. No one knows you. They don't know what you, how, where you're strong, where you're weak. They don't know how you react to situations. They don't know your mentality. But within one year, forget one year now, within the first tour, Teams will assess you, they will find out your weaknesses, they will find out your strengths, and they will present you with challenges that will confound you, you will find it difficult, and sometimes you will fail. When I realized that I was not meeting the standards required, because getting in was easy, now my job is to stay there, not for a year, but to have a long career. All I could do was really sit back and think, what do I need to do? And 
the real improvement in my life can happen when I suddenly realized this, this light bulb moment, not the, any, any, anyone else, but I suddenly had this epiphany and self realization that I really couldn't play straight. I was more a guy who was, you know, playing square of the wicket, playing cuts and pools, had really bad football, I couldn't play spin properly. And if I didn't do anything about it, I was going to lose out. I was not going to go anywhere in my career. The next thing I had to do now that I realized that I was 20% of what I should be to be able to compete and hold my place in the side was to find out what to do about it. So it was a case of, of trying to broaden my knowledge base. So it was about talking to our vendor, who was at, at NCC with me at my club. It was about talking to Russ Khan, talking to everyone I could about um, Good players as Pinash Andre Gavanna, Marjuna Rana Tukla, trying to find out what is it that they do. I also thought there was some massive secret that it was this natural talent that enabled them to do it. But what I really found out was that each of them had done the same things that I was doing then. Actually, trying to find out from other people what it is that worked for them. But the real secret then is not copying that, taking it, and trying to transport it into your game. The real thing then was to find out what worked for me as an individual. I was built differently, I was a left hand, I held the back differently. Everything about me was unique when compared to, to them and they were unique when compared to the players they took advice from. So it took me another six months of work changing things, not being successful. You take the risk of not being successful when you change. But change is important as long as you do it with purpose and you do it to change for the better. And I found out six months down the line that things were better, things were working. So I progressed from year to year. And in the last six months, I've actually gone back and completely changed my game again. I've changed things that I was never asked to change. When Marlon became battle coach, uh, I used to bat by tapping my bat on the ground. The last Two and a half tours, I was experimenting to see whether I could do something better that will give me a bit more time against faster bowling, a bit more time. I'm 35, now the older you get, your reflexes slow down slightly. So I need to come up with, with new tactics in my game to try and adapt to those situations. So I changed things that Marvin thought no, you shouldn't be changing because it's dangerous. If this doesn't work, what do you do? But it is something that I believe that I must do. And I did it. And for my luck, it actually worked. And it, it, it actually what it does, it gives you a new lease of life. It gives you a new sense of purpose. It gives you a new belief and a new enthusiasm. And you become more energized. Because now you've found out that you can change. You can change. You can do new things. You can do them better. That is one of the most important things that we've been trying to inspire the younger cricketers with the importance of change and changing at the right moment with the right foundation. So we try to build this culture of excellence in our team in everything we do. From the way we talk to each other, from the way we uh, in, in, in address when we're on the team bus, uh, to, the, to our punctuality, uh, to um, adhering to, to curfews when we're on tour, especially uh, night before games, to adhering to discipline when it comes to recovery and rehabilitation. We try to set down certain, not rules, but certain, not even perimeter, but that, that, that limits you, but certain, that's a certain foundation that will help us to excel in the way we do. And this foundation instills in us the confidence that we are the best. We are Sri Lanka, but we are the best. We do things that everyone else does, but in our own way, we tweak it to suit our Sri Lankan psyche, our Sri Lankan anatomy, our Sri Lankan muscle mass, the Sri Lankan diet. We do not live or work as Australians. We do not play or work or train as the English. 
we do not train and work as the Pakistanis or even the, the, the Indian teams. So we are not there. We are Sri Lanka. We tweak everything we take from everywhere. All the knowledge we have, we take it. We adapt it to suit the Sri Lankan need. Sometimes we have to change certain perceptions we have. Sometimes we have to change ourselves to be able to make the best use of it. We can't live and think the way we did 10 years ago, even the way we did last year. I remember we were having this seminar at the Cricket World trying to change the thought system in Sri Lanka, trying to tell them that to become better, to compete internationally, we can't have 20 clubs competing. We need to streamline it to a provincial system where five to six teams compete to the best that is the best. And the club system we have now can carry on but it contributes to that provincial system. One of the first things we had was a gentleman who you will see, uh, you will know if I mention the name, an SSC stalwart, and goes up. Why do we need to change anything? We want a World Cup in this club system. It's a good reason. But hasn't Australia won more World Cups than we Hasn't the West Indies won more World Cups than we So what, why are we satisfied and why do we think that we want to work on doing this? So it's fine. It is not. It is not fine to justify a bad system by talking of one epic achievement. A proper system enables you to reach those standards consistently. I've heard former cricketers talk about computer analysis. My days, I couldn't even turn on the computer. I don't even know how to type an email. So why do you guys need it now? We need it because it helps us to get a competitive edge. The times have changed. The skills have changed. We have access to things we didn't have before. But what it does is it doesn't make us anything more than who we are. But now we are using tools that will enhance what we do. It benefits the team, it benefits the country, it benefits the sport. It's the same thing with speaking English in Sri Lanka. A lot of people have this, at we in the University of Colombo and, and former cricketers say, you know, English or you know, this, that. It is a need of the times. For you to improve as an individual in this day and age, English is a tool. You don't need to be a slave to it. You need to be able to use it, whatever advantage that it gives you, so that it enhances you. Because trust me, in your field, in my field, we don't compete locally. We play locally, but we compete internationally. We're out there to be in the record books alongside the Laras, the Bradmans, the, the Sobers, the Lynn Huttons, Barry Richards of these, of, of the bygone days and up to we don't want to be a, a small player somewhere, a footnote. We want to dominate, we want to lead, we want to be the best. Not just the best out there, but the best that we can be. Just two completely different things. And unfortunately, if you achieve something and you think that you are the best that you can be, and you cruise, the only way you're going to cruise is downwards. What we have, who we are, how we contribute to it is importantly that for you. If you all want to compete internationally, to be the best internationally, you need to be able to change yourselves. You need to be able to adapt and understand first what you have to do to change. Who you are, how you change yourself. You don't have to change your core beliefs because those are important. Your values are what makes you who you are. Keep them. Use the advantages that the world offers you to be able to contribute fully to yourselves, to your families, to your workplace, and ultimately to your country. And what you are doing with the simple voting and the responses that you've got to it goes a long way to prove that it's exactly what you have 
that to them. The little thing of an air filter in a morning, you've got other countries now asking you, well, how do you do it? Can we do it? What a great idea. Someone might take that idea and make it better. And then maybe you can go back to them and say, oh, fantastic. Use that for yourselves again. Maybe you take that and make it even better. But being Sri Lankan, being a local, is not a disadvantage. It is who we are. It is how we use what is out there, what is available to us. How we broaden our minds, our base of knowledge, and ultimately how we apply it and what we achieve through it is going to distinguish it from everyone else. And you yourself from here, from a little island, who knows? You might do something that might change the world. But question everything that you have. Question yourself. Question your colleagues. Question your, your managers, your leaders, but in a positive manner. Einstein used to say you're a question away from changing the world, not an answer, but actually a question. And that is what we do every day. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Question yourself. Ask of yourself, what can I do better today so that I'm better at my job? I'm better. What makes me better? Find it out. Embrace it, do it, share it. Because that is your responsibility. And within a team, do not pass the buck. Do not talk about someone else's performance. It doesn't matter. Because you are doing your job. If you do your job, you will find that other people are pushed to do theirs better. You will find a new respect for each other. You will find a new workplace environment of excellence. You will find a sense of fulfillment and achievement. You would know that doing your job properly actually is teamwork. Because that is what the team expects of you. And nothing else.